The first rule in our new exclusive club is that I am the Grand Vizier. You're the Grand Fish Ear? Vizier. Grand Vizier. What's the second rule? The second rule is that we won't let anyone into our club way down live. They're snubbed. <laughs> What about Bumper? Mm-mm. No tail chases allowed. Bumper is snubbed. Uh, how about Bailey? Definitely snubbed. She'd make us wash up before meals. How about Theo? Theo's a human. No humans allowed. Snubbed. That just leaves us only, Luther. The Us Only Club. What a name! How exclusive can you get? Just think, we can be as messy as we want, stay up past our bedtime, eat snacks between meals, collect dues. Dues? But there's only you and me in the club. Hmm, have to think that one through. Anyways, let me teach you our secret club handshake. <laughs> It's very exclusive. It's not very friendly. That's the idea. <laughs> what a club. What an interesting hat you have there, Belfry. It's our official Us Only Club hat. You can't have one because you got snubbed. I got snubbed? Oh, dear. Luther snubbed you. He's the Grand Fish Ear. Did he say Fish Ear? Luther said humans don't have clubs. Oh, but they do. Humans have many sorts of clubs. Is this your club, Theo? No, this is where the church meets. The church isn't a club? No, but unfortunately people sometimes treat the church like a club. It's very sad. Others think of it as a place where people who look and think alike get together once a week. Some take pride in their church, but look down their noses on others. And then there are those who avoid going to church altogether. But that isn't what God intended at all. Here is what a healthy church in the first century looked like. The day of Pentecost was one of the three great annual feasts in Israel. Jewish pilgrims from every town and city in the Roman Empire would come out of obedience to the law of Moses. It would begin just like any other holy day in Jerusalem. Shepherds waking in the fields with their sheep. Street vendors selling pigeons, doves, sheep and cattle. Priests entering the temple to perform their sacred duties. Little did the people realize that on this particular day of Pentecost, Ten days after the ascension of Jesus Christ, something wonderful was about to take place. Gathered inside a secluded upper room, a group of believers were waiting for the promise of the Holy Spirit, whom Jesus said he would send. Suddenly, there was a sound like a mighty rushing wind that filled the room. And with a fiery demonstration of supernatural power, the church was born. The early church was a healthy church. The Holy Spirit filled believers with the supernatural ability to walk in the Spirit as Jesus did, giving them spiritual gifts that enabled them to advance God's kingdom on earth. The Bible says that the early believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings. The disciples met daily to hear the apostles because they were truly hungry for God's Word. It is the careful study of God's Word that teaches believers what pleases God, 
corrects them when they sin and instructs them how to walk and think and speak like Jesus. The Bible says that the early church devoted themselves to fellowship so that everyone was of one heart and mind. Not only did they meet on the temple grounds, but they also met in one another's homes as well. It wasn't about worshipping in a certain place, but about worshipping with the people of God. They broke bread in their homes, the wealthy alongside the poor, eating together with glad and sincere hearts. It was a church that prayed together continually, praying for the needs of believers, a church that prayed for the sick and the elderly, a church that asked that God would advance his kingdom through their lives. It was a church that gave generously to everyone who had need. It was a church motivated by love for God and for one another. Jesus said that the world would take notice of believers that demonstrated love to one another. Because of such acts of love, the early church gained favor with people, so that people were added to their number every day. God blesses a healthy church, because a healthy church reflects His glory and shows people what Jesus looks like in character, as well as in His love for people. The church isn't about fancy buildings or clever programs. Neither is it about a person's race or social status. It's about spirit-filled believers called out of the world to follow Jesus and walk in his steps. When people see Jesus in your church, they will give glory to God and come to him. Jesus said that wherever two or more are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst. The church is a gathering of believers who love and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. <sighs> there. Finally finished me list of rules for our Us Only Club. No club member may associate with cats, rats, hedgehogs, badgers, or any other creatures of questionable character. Including these. <laughs> Something there, Belfry. <laughs> <laughs>